checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Um, we're, we'll get back to the NBA thing in a second. I want to talk more wrestling before we get there, though. Uh, SummerSlam and All In, your lead story in The Observer was based on those cards shaping up. And I have a question about the Rhea Ripley, Liv Morgan, Dom Mysterio love triangle here. I, I think the I think the optics of most love triangles, or the the way most love triangles work, they're they're pretty predictable, I guess. But I think mm -hmm. this one is a little different because you have two women, one guy, and I think they really need to be thoughtful about how they do it. I don't want to see Rhea Ripley as the dumb baby face being a step behind. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a really good point. Um, especially because she's been so dominant and powerful and, you know, losing in the love battle in a weird way would hurt her character more than losing the wrestling match. Right. And, and Liv did shame her looks ever so generically on raw, which she I did, did not think that they would do. Well, that's trying to get heat on live, you know. Yes. Um, I, I, um, I did not think it would happen the way it did either, but I understood why they did it at that moment because it was something to let's get even more heat on live because you're going to have all these people rallying to her. How dare you know what I mean? How dare she say that about another woman, let alone Rhea Ripley, who you know, you know what I mean? So it's it's a way to because I think that there were some people. Not a lot. I mean, Liv is cl clearly the heel, but I think that they want to make sure that it's a hundred percent. You know, um, you know that you know it's not that she's a really pretty girl, and you can understand. And you want her to be a total heartless bitch. You know, and so if Dom goes with her, he's going with the, you know, you know what I mean. He's making the the mistake, but he's doing it anyway because. He's not loyal or I, I, I don't know. You know, I mean, we got a week to go. Um, they're going to do what they're going to do. I just can't see it being what they did Monday. If they, if Monday is the end and they stay together, you know, Ripley and um, and Dom, I just feel that like that, that, that was a bad end. So I don't believe it's the end. I don't think anyone believes it's the end. I feel the same way about this storyline as other really good storylines in wrestling, which is, I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, the bloodline was very much that way, though they they stretched out some of that bloodline stuff pretty far on some episodes of SmackDown. Um, they, they, they 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 did they did, but you know, like the like, I think people were waiting for the Sammy Sammy Zayn turn for a long long time. But if I go back and look at it. It, I did peak at the right time. Mm -hmm. You know, you did, you know, I mean, you could question what they did because it's like they got Sami Zayn so hot and now where, where is he? You know what I mean? It's like he got hot, then he lost, then he became, you know, a tag team guy. And now he's, he's a guy, you know, wins some, loses some people like him, but he ain't, he ain't a superstar or, or top guy in the company. And there was, there was a point where it felt like he could be, he had the momentum to be, but they didn't believe him in, in him. You know, I mean, they just didn't. And, and I, you know, and there'll be many, many people who will say, of course, they're right. How could he be the top guy? Um, but that's that's one of those WWE things. You know, if you don't look like a leading man, then then you can you can you know, if you're a good wrestler, you can you know have a nice job and do well and be high on the card. But but you can't be the leading man. He's he's not allowed to be the leading man. And, you know, it's the same thing that Danielson faced. Um, and let, but unless you you market him and give him the chance, you know, unless you open your mind. But it's it's TV people, you know. TV mm -hmm. people look at it like it's a cosmetic business, you know. We want we want Roman Reigns, you know. And these fans are too stupid. When when Roman Reigns was the top guy, these fans are too stupid to get that he's got to be the top guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't you fans get it? And then you know the fans reject it, and you know because they're not bound. They're not bound by these, you know, rules of it's a cosmetic business, and you must worship the the best looking, most big buffed athletic looking guy and these other guys are they're worker bees you don't you get it they can work good so what who cares you know the other one the drew mcintyre and cm punk feud which now adds uh seth rollins uh, as a special guest referee that one is, is the same thing I, i'm just like i can't wait to see what happens next and the the interesting thing about that one 
is Drew. His social media game is fantastic. What'd you think of the photo of him and Jack Perry yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Drew's really creative. He's really smart. He thinks about this all the time. And he's done, I mean, seriously, like when I was thinking about like wrestler of the year last week when I did the story, I was like, you know, and I was coming up with names. And it's like, I, I mean, Drew's not going to win wrestler of the year. Well, maybe he will. You know, if he goes and wins the title and has a great six months, I, I, I suppose he could. But the thing is, is, is like, it's like, when I was looking at candidates, like, well, what about Drew McIntyre? It's like great promos, good, good, you know, a lot of great, really good to great matches. Um, just carrying a feud, carrying a feud with a guy who's injured for six months and carrying that feud for six months and making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and realistically, I mean, you could argue it's the biggest match at SummerSlam. I, I think it's the biggest. I, I would say if you're asking me what's the biggest match, I think that's the one. And it's, you know, and granted, you know, Punk's got that unique charisma and everything like that. And he's been gone for six months, which all helps. But still, I mean, you know, you've got two world titles and you got the Rhea Ripley Dom thing. And, and you know, Punk has been good in this program, but, but um, Drew McIntyre has completely carried it. I mean, if you're looking at a guy carrying a program, I mean, he, he's, he's done that better than anybody in wrestling this year, if you really think about it. What do you think about Punk and just the injuries that he's facing as he gets older? Do you think he's going to change his style, or do you think these are kind of like freakish kind of injuries? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, he he gets he's you know you I I, I, don't, I don't have a good answer for that. We'll watch and we'll see. Well, I, I just sure, I kind of harken back. To, I'm sure. I'm, 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 I, I would suspect, I would suspect this. I suspect that the work that he did in AEW will be different in WWE. Yeah. I, I think he will do a safer style in WWE. In, 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 in AEW, he would want to, you know, the thing in AEW is, you know, and Sting did this too. It's like you see these guys and you see what they do and you want to be one of the guys. You know what I mean? You don't want to be the lazy old guy resting on their laurels. Adam Copeland, same way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, just work your freaking ass off because they know everybody here works their ass off. And I don't want to be the last thing I want is these young guys to work outwork me to the point where the fans go, man, he's all rep. And he's not. Yeah, he doesn't belong ball. here. Right. And, and, you know, no matter what anyone says, the standard in WWE is lower and people hate to hear that, but it is. So you don't have to do as much. Um, and you know, there's, there's, there's positives for that too, but I don't think he's going to be pushed, um, to do that kind of stuff. However, you know, I don't think that he wants to go in there with Drew McIntyre who's going to work his ass off and be the lazy guy in that match either. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, he's got too much pride for that. So it's not like he's going to like not, you know what I mean? But, but there's not going to be, there's no emphasis on him to, um, you know what I mean? To climb a ladder and jump off a ladder or anything like that. Whereas in AEW, you know, guys, you know, Sting and Adam Copeland and, and, and Punk and all that, they, they went to great extremes. I don't think that, I mean, I think he will have to be in shape. I think he will have to work hard um, because if he doesn't, everyone else on the card will, and, and he'll stand out. So, um, but, but I don't think that it's it's as injurious, you know. But, you know, it's not, it's it's very often not the crazy moves where you get hurt. Very often. It's just the stuff. And, you know, he is, you know, mid-40s, lots and lots of mileage on his body, lots of injuries. Um, you know, I mean, you, you can't. He, you he, can't, he you can't trained, he, he probably trained uh, much harder in a shorter period of time in MMA as well which probably put some miles on, on his body in, in that way. In a, in, a, in a different way. Yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? Wrestlingobserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, wrestlingobserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.